Funding for this video series was made possible by the USDA National Institute of Food and Agriculture's Beginning Farmer and Rancher Development Program. here at Moyer Farms. I've always grown up on a, a specialty crop farm ever since I was a kid. We, we grew a lot of specialty crops and went to farmers markets and then after I went to school got an outside job and then came back about five or six years ago and started uh, our own farm here and we raise about 60 to 70 acres of vegetables every year depending on different stuff with pumpkins and different crops we grow but uh, we concentrate on tomatoes and cucumbers, zucchini yellow squash. And my market outlets right now uh, consist of our retail shop here at our store, uh, a couple farmer markets in the city, a food hub we're part of, and then we also do wholesale to grocery stores and uh, distribution centers in the city. The differences of selling between wholesale and our retail markets uh, and some of the benefits to the wholesale market, uh, in my opinion, would be um, you're moving more volume for sure. It's more of a consistent market. You kind of know your numbers on what you need to produce and how and when it is going to get there. Um, with that, it brings challenges as well, but those are awful different benefits too because on a retail side of things, you're not moving as much of a volume. You don't know the volume that you're gonna move each week, so it's tough to plan. Uh, so planning is easier for a wholesale market as far as potential and what you're actually trying to achieve. So that would be that would be one of the biggest benefits is able to plan and consistency. I'm John. I'm Austin. And we're Green Thumbs Up. We're two family farms that join together to form one produce business. We grow seasonal vegetables. So Green Thumbs Up is a 50-50 partnership between me and Austin. We're classified as an LLC and we love growing vegetables. Most of the uh, vegetable production is on less than an acre and then we do kind of expand for our, uh, pumpkins and vining crops. We sell both at Leavenworth Farmers Market, Overland Park Farmers Market, and we're a member of the Kansas City Food Hub, where we wholesale squash, cucumbers, heirloom tomatoes, this and that. We kind of got too big for our farmers markets, and we thought it'd be a lot easier to sell things ahead of time, and so it was just uh, the right situation for us, and we were ready to grow more. As far as our labor force, you're, you're looking at it, this is about 98% of our workers right here, me and him. So we do have some occasional help in the summer, but uh, primarily it's just me and Austin. From seed to finish, we start our seeds early. We, uh, we have greenhouses and we start our individual seeds, put them in pots. The seeds grow really fast as squash, so the timing is tough. Three to four weeks before we think it's going to go in or the weather's good enough to go into the field. So our plants are ready to go in the field. We, we transplant them in the field. And then as soon as we see um, a bloom, or not necessarily a bloom, but we're, we're probably within three days of picking, we start more seeds in the greenhouse. And it's just a progression all the way through the summer, all the way up until the 20th of August. And then, then you're pushing whether that crop will actually make it because of cold. We'll start all of our zucchini from seed in our nursery greenhouse, typically transplant them out in two to four weeks depending on the time of year. 
Every month or so we like to add about 150 to 250 new summer squashes. We do about 60% of that would be green zucchini and then 40% is a yellow zucchini that is just more attractive than you know the crook neck summer squash. It's just got a more vibrant color and we've been able to sell a lot more of those at markets because people haven't seen it before. It's not something you can find in a grocery store. The yellow zucchini also does really well in the restaurants and wholesale markets, especially the chefs. The chefs really like that that bright, vibrant color of the yellow zucchini. We'll start our zucchini plants inside. We'll start about early April. We'll get them out in the field by May and just hope we don't get an early frost. Sometimes you do, but since we're constantly planting, you know, we can afford that risk and their seed's relatively cheap. So, and then we'll grow that throughout until winter freezes. We try to position a lot of our fields close to a water source and we're pulling out of a pond or a creek most of the time with drip irrigation. Um, and then later in the year we probably don't have irrigation at all and we're just hoping for natural stuff and the decision to do plastic or not plastic you know that goes back and forth that's a labor thing as well but all your early production probably drives to go on plastic to try to speed up and get product out early uh, most of the time your grounds warmer everything during the summer and sometimes plastic in the middle of the summer can get too hot so we we're probably laying off the plastic in the middle and then maybe back in to plastic in in the fall. You know, when we first started, everybody wanted a really small, fancy, itty bitty squash. And, you know, we started realizing that those squash don't hold up very well to the market. And it was really tough to have or keep that consistent, good quality squash. But when you started out and you took squash to a market that was a little bit bigger, just as fresh and shiny, and it held up better, we just gradually built our market to a better looking squash and bigger. Uh, something that they didn't want in the beginning, but then they came to accept and really want and not want the little flimsy squash. Weather depending on how warm it is and how much moisture really depends on how fast that stuff will grow. But you can take a squash that's on a plant that's that big today, leave it, and tomorrow it's going to be that big and a little bit better. But if, you, if you're picking that, you're going to have to give two thirds more to fill that box up and they're not, it's not going to hold up as well. So you're, you're training your employees and everything, and it, it may take a little bit to get an eyeball for that stuff, but you're taking a squash that big and letting it go till that. And when we first started, we realized that a day and a half was about as perfect as you could get as far as how soon you needed to be back in the field to pick. But the management of labor and consistency, we just decided just to go to every day and just be in the same field every day until it was done and the just management was way easier instead of trying to do every other every day and a half. When it comes to the zucchini, size grading is extremely important because a lot of home gardeners, you grow a zucchini this big and it's fine, but when you're packing for wholesale, you gotta have it at the right size, so you gotta be picking every day at the right time. Unfortunately, there's never a day off in the zucchini world. We try to do Sundays as family days sometimes, and then on Monday they're now this big and now they're essentially trash because you can't sell them. And if you have your zucchini on a drip line, they're going to grow really fast. So if you take a couple days off, you're going to end up with baseball bats. Another reason you can be successful at growing zucchini for wholesale is that your quality is going to be any wholesale store quality every time. And so when your buyers see how high quality of a product that you have, they're going to want to buy from you every single time. So our zucchini is sold at Fresh Markets Wednesdays and Saturdays, and then our wholesale distribution goes out Mondays and Thursdays, so it spreads it out throughout the week so we don't have to store it at all. The zucchini isn't as perishable as other vegetables, so when you pick it and you put it in your 55 degree cooler, it's not gonna go bad. While if you're doing leafy greens, your picking time is critical, and things can go bad if you're trying to store them for a period of time, and your quality can decline. So it's a little bit more reliable if you're using crops like zucchini or cucumbers or tomatoes. The differences we have for zucchini and yellow squash, as far as the management of uh, in a field, not, not many. Uh, there's very, very slight differences in a field on what we would do between a zucchini and yellow squash as far as spacing and varieties and fertilizers. But we typically grow about two thirds zucchini and a third yellow. And that's just for marketing on what we've seen we can get rid of. And that's just a pretty pretty consistent number for us. Pests and diseases on how we manage is a very weather specific year to year, but typically uh, we 
you know, you're on a ridge, you're trying to keep things as uh, dry as you can um, year in and year out. Wet years are always worse than, than dry ones and no matter what, we spray as needed. Uh, there's a lot of scouting goes on. If the weather is bad that week or that month, or you're doing a lot more spraying than you typically would. If we're hot and dry, we're, we're probably not going to have to spray very much. Um, so that's, that's kind of on the disease side of things. Bugs, what we've realized is if you keep them out early, you're better off. If you let something get out of control, sometimes it's almost unmanageable on what you can do. Um, so I guess the key for us on that is just to, to keep them out. And sometimes that's not easy to do, but that's, that's the best thing we can do. When you're growing organic zucchini, you're going to have cucumber beetles and squash bugs that you just cannot contain organically which is part of the reason we are constantly replanting and moving our plantings. We just try to keep ahead of the bugs. And we'll overplant our zucchini. You know, if we want to harvest 100 a day, we'll make sure we have 125 plants because you might lose a plant a week as you go throughout the year. Typically, we get one zucchini harvested off of each plant per day. You know, I've grown up in the farming industry. I work for a farm service, so I, I've become knowledgeable about fertilizers and chemistries, and so that's pretty easy for me to do. I know we're specialized and we're not using the same thing as a row cropper would, but from what I've seen, information-wise, go to your university extensions. There's not a lot of vegetables grown in our area, so we have to look for a lot of outside sources and just your peers in general. I mean, uh, other than that, it's self-testing. It's, self -testing. it's doing things different every year, writing them down, because you will forget what you do, uh, and just trying new things. Maybe you're not trying a new thing on a lot of acres, but you're trying something new all the time. Spacing-wise, chemical-wise, fertilizer-wise, there's just this stuff you have to trial and error, but peers are a good, good source of information as well.